Nine months ago, in November 2019, I started this art journal. And I, my goal was to challenge myself, which was my word for 2020, and just unleash creativity and try different things in this art journal. And I think I've done that. And I'm really excited to share all these pages with you. Do I love every page? No. Do I love a lot of them? Yes. And I just had so much fun with all of these. There are tutorial videos available in the playlist Art Journaling Mixed Media Tutorials if you want to go there and see exactly. So if you're seeing something that you like here, go to that playlist. I'll put it in the I cards in the top right hand corner as well as an end card at the end of this video. But checking through the playlists of my channel is a great way of finding things a little bit faster. Before we go on, I just want to say too, if you're not being notified of my upcoming videos and you would like to be, one way that I've heard people talk about works is to unsubscribe from my channel and then resubscribe. You go to the bell, click on the bell and select to be notified and somehow that resets things and then YouTube, YouTube will let you know when I upload new videos and then you get the thumbnail. You can decide if it's something that interests you or not. So without further ado, let's do the flip through. Love this one. Put gesso through the stencil, which was a fairly new technique in that time. Thick gesso and that just gives you that little bit of texture that's there. Love the yellows and greens. Not my typical. This one is fairly dark, experimenting with colors that I don't normally use, very fall-like. And I apologize for having to turn the journal from side to side. So this one was collaging. Lots of different techniques. This one did a lot of luscious layers with stencils, some collaging of the circles on top. Lots and lots and lots of detail in there. Many of my tutorials are great for beginners because I tend to, especially on a smaller art journal page, limit the amount of techniques that I'm doing. So it allows you to experiment with one of them. This one's got modeling paste texture, collaging. These little penguins create a very polar, cool color zone, cool color scheme. Remember I talked about some of the pages that I don't love? Love the background. Didn't love the koi that I put on here. That was a stencil. Very tempted to rip this one out. But you know what? It's all part of the process. And I left it because I love the background that I have here. And I might use this as inspiration for that. I may even attempt using that Koi stencil again for another practice. Remember, your art journal isn't about a collection of perfect art. It's a collection of artistic challenges and journeys. Collaging, I was experimenting with vintage. I really got my vintage vibe on in this last nine months. This one got a little dark, this page. Love the collaging butterfly. So I'm going to play with that. That's something that I can do. Love the texture that's here. This 
speaking of vintage, here's another vintage page with a stencil focal point here. And I've got, you know, stamping and stenciling down below. If you're liking the sentiments that I've used, many of these come from the sentiment packs that are available for instant digital download. And you can go to ninnies.com and you can see the various sentiment packs there and actually scroll through each page and see what the sayings are and whether that's something that you'd like to work in your art journal. Collage, building a birdhouse. Loving the background here. So again, the background might be something that I'm going to redo. Feels funny in August, seeing Christmas. This one was the negative painting technique, so I had this red pink background with texture, there's some texture paste, and then I painted out the negative space to bring out the Christmas decorations. Very effective way. And very rare, this page has no sentiment. This one I absolutely love. This is where my vintage, everything came together. I had collaged vintage papers down below, some stamping, some stenciling of vintage vibe, um, free printable, these birds. This one actually was the jump start. I have now recreated this on canvases and made it much bigger adding more things but using this as the base. So when people ask why do you art journal? Sometimes it's to get my ideas down and this becomes an idea book. You can really tell I was very much into the vintage here. Love this stencil here. I had printed out some things onto tissue paper cut out words with my silhouette. So this has got texture and even use drywall tape here. Finger painted florals. These were painted by using my fingers. Love the background. Again, this was a color scheme I liked, but I don't use much with yellow and the teal, but I love it. Getting out my stamped wooden letter ones and using that and embracing the imperfections. Lots of texture, lots of layers. Great vibrant colors, the purple, the yellow, the orange, and then all the colors that they make in between. Um, do just with the stencil and adding the circles. Be brave enough to be bad at something new. And that's what I want you to do in your art journal. The first time you try a technique, it is, it may not work. Keep trying. If you stumble, make it part of the dance. If you do something on your art journal page and you don't like it, make it part of the dance, figure out something. Every step you do leads you to the next step. This one has a lot. I was experimenting with that drywall tape. Choose love. This again was I had my very bright colorful background and then with white paint this time used the negative painting technique and painted out the background to make those hearts pop. Very effective technique. Loving this one. Got modeling paste through a stencil, wooden stamp, letter stamps again that I stamp with acrylic paint. 
So in this one we have an analogous color scheme and that means if you look at a color wheel they have the five that are together. So if you choose those when you're creating a background they will always work well together. They will blend and they will not make a color that you really don't like. So it's kind of the safe zone. So if you switch, turn that around, as long as you're in that zone, you be a little cautious about the ones on the extremes, blending those, but otherwise you can make a really pleasant background. Small things matter. And I did this one with the seahorse stencil and then later on in another project I did the seahorse stencils and I painted this out with gesso and covered it and I actually improved it. So again, this is this is your learning ground. This is where you start learning and figuring out and experimenting. The flowers here that I stenciled really pop with this background. And the reason for that is that while the background is over here, the contrasting color, the complementary color, is over here. So these, while you don't want to mix them when they're wet, because you'll make brown, they'll really work together as a focal image background. Again, a very layered background and then stenciling on top and doing some line work. That's something that I came back to during this journal. Background, lots of stencils. This one's very, this is flat. There's no um, texture paste or anything. This is just stencil play, layering, and then using a negative paint to paint out this part and to set off the focal image. So you could do the same kind of thing and then any kind of focal image. This one I was experimenting with the stencils going for a certain look so I did actually ended up doing two pages because it didn't turn out exactly as I wanted so I went back and I kind of redid it so we have slightly different but the same and again that's how you learn. Lots of geometrics. We've got triangles and squares and diamonds and circles. and a trio of words. Lots of using the shading technique, the acrylic. Love this one. Basically this was a master board that I cut the square out and put that on there with a little bit of stenciling in the background. Love the black and white with a little bit of color. It just... something I need to redo again I think with that putting the color down and stenciling on a black and then across the color. Where flowers bloom so does hope. That comes from my Through the Garden Gate sentiment pack. Here I use a lot of mark makers and I have the color, again, I, the colors of what the flowers would be are really in the background and then the white. I love the contrast of this one. Going back to vintage, time for new beginnings. I wanted to challenge myself with red. Again, it got a little bit darker than I would like. Doing some line work, outlining. Stop saying I wish, start saying I will. The purple and the teal or aqua just look really well together with the black and white. 
So when you're starting, pick two colors, put them down, and then use black and white. Here I mounted the sentiment on some colored paper just to give it a little bit more weight on the page. And this it be starts the beginnings of my napkin journals in my collaboration with Ninny's Napkins. The apple blossoms here are a napkin that I decoupage down. And this was a brayered background. Very subtle, very light. Love the two colors, the, how they work together. Another napkin, this Flamingo Focal Point was on there. And I will put the link to Ninny's Napkins in the description box. Great source. Napkins are a great inexpensive source for focal images of a variety. This one was these rectangular shapes were a masterboard that I created that I used for cardboard coasters and then I use on an art journal page and you know that's the joy of making a masterboard then you can use it as an insta background or to establish a focal image. Just zoom out here a little bit. Another napkin. And this time I, de I decoupaged it onto dictionary paper. So that's what you see in the background. And then I ripped it and, and layered it on here. These Japanese font I um, cut with my silhouette. Another vintage one. And I had stenciled the lavender onto the white part of the napkin here. And so it has texture and then I'm using the white part of the napkin. Texture paste on here, layers of interest. Loving, I love, love, love this one. This, this part right here was a napkin and the, it set the tone for the colors because the blue and the teal that are in here I picked out in the background and the butterflies I had some clip art and again three words from my uh, short and sweet sentiment pack that I printed out on tea stain paper. Love this. This one could be canvas and sometimes that's what I do. I use this as a as a idea when I'm going to actually make canvases. This one was a master board that I cut out and became an insta background and then I stenciled on it and just added a magazine pick the tulips. The rooster and sunflower, that's a napkin with, and I paired it with similar motifs in my stencils. Again, this would be a beautiful canvas. If you had a kitchen uh, that, uh, where you, roosters, and I spent some time over painting painting over either clip art or napkin art and using that as the guide to layer paint on and get a very painterly effect. Love this one. Negative painting technique with a flower template. and the black background quotes from my sentiment pack. A fun Easter bunny 
napkin and this was again over painting. I, the flowers were all on the napkin and I just went over it. And it kind of becomes my own. Removing paint through a stencil. I had a colorful background here and then just again the black and white focal images. Sometimes I don't know what color to paint them. I kind of left them. This was another master board that I created and then I used it as an Insta background, which is great. Use your collage papers for an Insta background as the starting. You can just put one down and then you can add more to it should you want to or use it as is and you know make it a, a very quick easy page. Not every page needs to take hours and hours, right? Love the colors in the background here. The soft colors and the butterfly from my stash that was from a magazine. Just all comes together. Love the soft look. Bright greens and yellows. That was a challenge. I don't use a lot of greens and yellows. So the, here's what I did. Kind of went, took that Aztec kind of feel. So went with complementary color focal image. And then my sentiment that's again, the, the black background with just fit. And I used stencils here as borders. I've done that a couple times. That was something that I started doing more of. Looking at my stencils, using part of it to create the borders. Maximize your, your products. This one was my own cut stencils. I've been playing with cutting my own stencils and creating them and I, I just wanted to give them a spin. Focal images, napkin. And then I created this vibrant, bright colored background. And then a border from a, using a stencil. Lots of color on this background. I wanted to go purple. I've got some stamping, some stenciling on top. Then I did some painterly flowers, finger painted florals on here. Do I like everything about this page? No, but that's not the point. Again, I love the backgrounds here. Some of the layers that I have, and that could be something that I would use. Or when I'm creating the next time and I'm, I'm stuck, I could be flipping through this and I go, oh, I like that. I'm going to go back and use those again, and the page will end up in a different place. Collaging butterflies. I did the one that was vintage. This time I wanted to do a similar, but I wanted brighter colors. Love the butterfly using my collage papers, gel prints. Lots of texture, lots of visual texture, physical texture. Rediscovered the Harlequin stencil and stamp. This, the background here, was a gel print. Insta background. Use that. And then this was a gel print also. Then I stenciled on top of the gel print. Added, you know, cut out the butterfly wings from something else. So combining all the things that you have in your stash. Pull them out and see how they can work. This was a color scheme challenge. Created this colorful background. I wanted to use the reds and orange and, and the teal together. And then I just set it off by painting the square in the middle to put my focal image on. Napkin. 
And this, I love this. This was stenciling here. This I painted on and I stenciled the flowers underneath so they all, it's all texturized. It's, love how this turned out. Matching, you know, something, the napkin art with some, a stencil and melding the two. This looks like it's one piece. Looks like it was intended to be together. Here's another napkin journal. And this time I also I stenciled onto tissue paper and then decoupaged that on top. Decoupage or using modeling paste onto the tissue paper removes the fear of going and putting it on your on your page if it's so highly textured or if you struggle getting a, a good copy this way you can do it on tissue paper if it doesn't work you can throw it out you can also play with the orientation love this wintry background another napkin and again I matched the peacock doily with this peacock napkin and the colors I drew from it. I think I should have, if I did this again, I would lighten the background maybe so that the peacocks, it's a little too much all one, too much the same. So I would lighten it just a smidge, I don't know. But loving the look. Here, I had a lot of fun with this. Love the background again. You know, I loved, this background these colors so i went to the similar colors but again to went differently and then i did some doodle flowers on here where i did trace the flowers on freehand and i want to try to do more drawing doodling on my pages this one goal was to use different colors that i don't normally use the background, this was a bit of a challenge. It wasn't working exactly the way I wanted it, but I used black on top. I stenciled this as black modeling paste, and it just popped using the words again that have the black background. This was a winning color scheme. I love the colors here. And it's texturized, vintage. Here I have started with a colored background and I used negative painting to paint out these hexagons and circles and just really made this page pop. And here I'm using smaller, if you've got small stamps, there's ways of making those stamps those into focal images that have a little more weight on the page by putting them on circles or hexagons. Another napkin journal, this one's texturized underneath. It's, it feels like rich tapestry. Love Love, love, love this one. Definitely going to be one that's going to end up on a canvas. Another napkin journal. And I wanted to use a mandala to set off the focal image instead of texture everywhere. So only the mandala has texture. And that's, again, using gesso, thick gesso through a stencil. And then just a textured background that I picked the colors from the napkin. Another napkin, this hummingbird comes from a napkin. These are stamped from a Tim Holtz set. And I've got texture there, texture paste, and I kind of built my focal image with a napkin, stamps, and the texture paste through the stencil. Really loving this one too. This one might end up on a canvas. Love Celtic art, Celtic knots. That so I use that it both in the background and in the and is a focal image. 
And again, I have used a smaller stamp. This is a fairly large dragonfly, but small on the page. But I built it up by adding it, adding to it. There's another stencil here and a cute little kitty peeking out. This one I used some bright, bright, bright colors, melded the colors, used the reversing the stencil technique to keep those brights bright and bold on a black background. Another napkin journal. And this time it's, it's kind of vintagey, but very, very soft pastel-y colors, which is, I like to go bright or I've gone vintage. So this is kind of a bit of a difference. Overpainting the flowers that they had Again, taking the colors from the napkin and putting them into the background, using that as your jumping off point. Here I used a lot of my mark makers, sink liners, shelf liners, um, embroidery mesh, stencils. Love the color combo here. Cute! Cute, cute. This one is reversing the stencil technique. I love this Art Deco leaf stencil and I wanted to see how it looked. I thought it would look to work well for this technique. You know, that's part of it is also matching the stencil with the proper technique. The, the right application. This had lots of open spaces. Then I added to it with some circles and some clip art. And this one is actually the same exact colors. In fact, this started with leftover paint from the last page. And that brings us to an end. So thank you for joining me. Check out the playlist, art journal, mixed media and art journal tutorials. All of them will be there and you can just look at the thumbnails and find the one you're looking for. Give it a try. Use what I've given you as the jumping point to what you can create. Or create exactly what I have and learn the process. Join my Facebook group, Art Journaling and Mixed Media Creations. Follow me on Instagram at Creative Katie. Stay creative.